Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The votes are in and we now know which candidates will have made it to the ballot in November. Eric Hernandez will have key takeaways from yesterday's election runoff. And a good morning to you. It is the 15th of July, Wednesday morning. Thanks for joining us. We made it to Wednesday. We did. Monday morning, big NFL news was the Redskins retiring their name. We don't know the new team, team name yet, but somebody has been thinking ahead, and I was wondering if somebody was going to do this. And somebody did. Registering <laughs> trademarks for just about every option there was out there just to kind of get ahead of Washington and maybe get Daniel Snyder, majority owner of Washington's football team, to maybe pay up a little bit. Yeah, and he's been doing it for some time. So a uh, Virginia man hoping to cash in on the change, having filed dozens of trademark claims for possible new names since 2014. His name is Martin McCauley. Mr. Smarty Pants from Alexandria, Virginia, jumped on the name change uh, announcement, uh, name change way before the announcement. He's filed numerous tr uh, tr patent or sorry trademark claims according to the United States Patent and Trademark Office database they found at least seven names that have been registered just in the last month alone. So some of those include uh, Washington Red Wolves, Washington Red Tails, Washington Monuments, Washington Americans and Washington Veterans. So the idea presumably would be to sell the name to owner Daniel Snyder should Washington choose one of these registered names. The weird thing is Macaulay said he actually sent the NFL an email July 4th listing all the trademarks they could have at no charge, but he says they have not responded. Um, so right here, uh, whether Macaulay, or, according to one legal expert, whether Macaulay or anyone else attempting something similar would see any profit depends on intent to use the names. So that's what the legal expert is saying. Yeah, right they now. say it's unlikely that the trademark office or a court would We'll say somebody who was filing trademark application office solely for the purpose of speculating really had a bona fide attempt to use the name in commerce, but he's, he's even thought ahead there. Sure Some has. of these names that he's applied for trademarks on, he's opened up a, a website to sell merchandise <laughs> for an NFL team that, that, team that doesn't exist. Why can't I say team today? I keep saying tame. I don't know. <laughs> team. Team. It's Wednesday. NFL team. Well, I mean, selling t-shirts, mugs, and mm -hmm. wine glasses, uh, to, all to boost his claim. Yeah, that's hmm. very interesting. I don't think that Washington's going to have a problem with this. That, that's one reason they didn't announce the new name on Monday. They're getting all their trademark ducks in a row. I would imagine so. Let's take a look at the rundown. more than 3.4 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 across the country. In Texas, hospitals are running out of ICU beds along with antiviral drugs and staff. CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield says masks will be a main factor in the reopening of schools. Face coverings are not a symbol, but they're actually a very important preventive intervention that can really block this virus. Former Attorney General Jeff Sessions lost his Senate comeback bid. Former Auburn University football coach Tommy Tuberville defeated Sessions. President Trump's former physician has won the Republican primary runoff for a U.S. House seat right here in Texas. A former nursing assistant at a VA hospital in West Virginia has confessed to killing seven patients. Retta Mays pleaded guilty to intentionally injecting the elderly veterans with fatal doses of insulin. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is in the hospital this morning for a possible infection and is expected to remain there for several days. According to a statement from the Supreme Court, Justice Ginsburg experienced fever and chills Monday evening. President Trump is facing more accusations of racism. Why are African Americans still dying at the hands of law enforcement in this country? And so are white people. So are white people. What a terrible question to ask. The Patriots, the team says it will restrict Gillette Stadium to 20% capacity, about 13,000 people. Groups will have to stay at least six feet from other groups. A new offering from computer maker Kano is meant for cash-strapped school systems. Users put the computer together like a Lego set. Its battery life is said to be 10 hours. Each computer costs $300. A new viral trend on social media has them using face coverings to help them buy alcohol. Video show teams dress as elderly people and using face masks to help conceal their identity. They're seen successfully and illegally buying booze and celebrating their success. Oh, those crazy kids. It's a lot of effort. <laughs> it's oh my of, goodness. It's all fun and games till somebody gets hauled into court. Ugh, I don't want to be in their shoes. Nah, me neither. Let's go outside with live cam. We know it's coming weather-wise, Justin Horn, so it's up to you to get super duper creative today mm. and you're surrendering. 
Ugh. Yeah, we've got a few things. Okay. In there. Okay. Try He's came. Up a little bit. Uh, live cam shows you we've got some morning clouds. I think these will help us a little bit. We should be a little bit cooler than yesterday. Still in the 100s, though. Still close to a record territory, unfortunately. Let's talk about rainfall. That's good news, right? Uh, there is a slight chance as we get into Friday and Saturday, and it is slight, 20% or less. Uh, Friday afternoon and Saturday. Best chances will be along the Texas coast, but I think even here in San Antonio, there's an outside shot at a shower or two. Today, 101, some morning clouds and then more heat this afternoon. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers right now. 77 Bernie Stage, 85 New Braunfels, 80 at Stinson. You see the cloud cover, it is shifting in here, and we should get it for another couple of hours. Uh, so, uh, partly cloudy skies for now. Forecast again up around 101. There is a good breeze out there today out of the south 10 to 20 miles per hour, but that also means humidity is coming back. Uh, we'll talk more about that. We've got a junior meteorologist coming up at 930. So we're going to mix it up a little bit today, guys. We'll have more a little bit later. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside with Transguide this morning, there's US 281 at Grayson. Things moving smoothly for now. And top stories we are following today. A Bear County detention deputy has been arrested for his alleged role in an assault of a jail inmate. Please tell us that uh, Gene Camacho Morales is facing a number of charges, including aggravated assault. Happened on Monday afternoon when an inmate assaulted another in the showers there at the Bear County Jail. Police tell us Camacho knew the assault was happening, but waited almost half an hour to alert other detention deputies. Camacho is accused of then lying about what happened. Investigators with the sheriff's office and the FBI were later able to determine the truth by reviewing surveillance video and interviewing witnesses. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says one of the inmates involved in the attack already has been arrested. A grim milestone for Bear County. Six new COVID-19 related deaths reported yesterday, bringing our total to more than 200. Officials also announced 854 new cases for a total of more than 21,000. Even though the virus continues to strain hospital resources, the numbers showed some good news. Mayor Ron Nierberg says hospitalizations numbers were down yesterday, and so were the number of people in the intensive care unit. Right now, about 11% of staffed beds and 44% of ventilators are available. Governor Greg Abbott expects more flexibility will be given to public school districts regarding the use of online learning at the start of the new school year. That's according to the Texas Tribune. Right now, school districts across the state are waiting for an announcement from the Texas Education Agency. On Tuesday, local leaders said meetings with Bear County superintendents revealed they're under a lot of pressure from parents to continue to use of online learning for longer than the three weeks the TEA had mandated. Mayor Nirenberg says he's in communication with them about how city officials can help. That will be welcome news. Uh, with regard to um, you know, our public health authority intervening to ensure a safe environment, I certainly support that. Um, you know, what that looks like, though, is going to be different uh, depending on where you are. And we have 17 school districts here, so we want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, but I certainly believe that there shouldn't be a rush back to school uh, in person if it's not safe. And right now, we've got tremendous amount of community spread, and um, we need to be careful about that. Several school districts, teachers, unions, and politicians have sent letters to the TEA to support the delay of in-person learning or the start of the school year. Bear County last night joined the rest of Texas in deciding the final nominees for the general election in November. With a wrap up of, of last night's races, our Erica Hernandez is joining us live from her home. Good morning. Hey guys, go mo good morning. Well, there was more than a dozen races on GOP and Democratic ballots, so let's take a look at some of the results. First, let's start with the highest profile statewide race. Mary N.J. Hagar, an Air Force veteran, beat out State Senator Royce West by five percentage points. Hagar will now be the Democratic nominee to face off against Senator John Cornyn in November. Next up, a race that may result in a recall. This is between Republican candidates Tony Gonzalez and Raul Reyes. Right now, Gonzalez has the lead by only seven votes and is claiming victory. A recount may be issued later today. This is for the Congressional District 23, which is the replacement for Congressman Will Hurd. After a mudslinging race with the Democratic nomination for State Senate District 19, Roland Gutierrez beat out Sochi Peña Rodriguez by about 1,600 votes. Here in Bear County, Precinct 1 Commissioner Sergio Chico Rodriguez 
lost his seat to Rebecca Becky Clay Flores by about 20 percentage points. Clay Flores will now take on the Republican Gabriel Lara in the general election. In precinct three, Trish DeBerry won the GOP nomination over Tom Rickoff. This is for County Commissioner Kevin Wolf's spot, who will be retiring. And voters ousted Bear County GOP Chair Cynthia Brim. She lost to John Austin. Now, as far as voter turnout, Bear County Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan says more than 31,600 people, or 10 percent, voted which was outstanding for a runoff, runoff election. Kellen thanked election officials at polling sites for working despite COVID-19 concerns. She said there will be lessons learned that will go a long way in how her office prepares for the November general election. Now, for more on election results, just head to our website, ksat.com. Mark, Steph. Thank you, Erica. Right now it is uh, just about 909, 82 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. A virtual meeting of the British Parliament was interrupted by an unexpected guest. You're not going to want to miss this. A middle school football team in Georgia became state champs 50 years ago, but just now getting recognition for it, how they celebrated their victory. A police officer stepping up to save the life of a three-week-old baby. We take a look at the dramatic moments caught on camera. And let's take a look at stocks right now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 275 points at 26,916. And welcome back in your morning headlines. It is tax day and a deadly train crash in the Czech Republic. A officer saves a baby's life and it's all caught on dash cam. And a cat crashes a meeting of parliament over in the UK. Boy, this one's getting a lot of yeah, play. Good morning, David. Pretty funny when you look at it. All right, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. You know that, but today is tax day. Yep, it's usually April 15th, but it was postponed because of the coronavirus. The advice for a lot of folks, if you are filing today, you might want to do it online. It seems there's a huge pile of paperwork already for IRS employees because so many of them have been working from home. So if you've already filed a paper return, patience, you could be waiting a little longer than usual for your return. Remember, these are unusual times to begin with. And remember, if you need to still request an extension until October 15th. You can, but you still need to file a form asking for that extension. All right, you're looking at a horrific train crash. This happening just outside of Prague in the Czech Republic. It's where a passenger train crashed into a freight train. The driver of the passenger train was killed. Up to 35 passengers on that train injured. Some of those were taken to a hospital via helicopter. There were about 100 people on board at the time. The freight train was actually standing still when the collision happened. Crash happened last night. The tracks were going to be closed at least until noon today, check time. The crash is still under investigation. And a police officer comes to the rescue of a baby and saves the baby's life. You're watching dash cam video of the patrol car. The officer, Macy Juski, gets the baby in front of the car to use the headlights. The baby's not breathing. You can see mom is in a panic. The baby turning blue. The officer gets the baby's vitals. Then the officer turns her over and gives her a few thrusts on her back and that cleared her airway and the baby started breathing again, much to the relief of the family. To everyone's, you know, amazement and joy, uh, the baby made it uh, and the mother, you know, actually collapsed to the ground after that and I'm just so proud of our officer um, and what he did. A lot of times what we do doesn't make the news and in this case, uh, you know, it saved a life. Yeah, the police chief also complimented the officer on getting the baby's family calmed down before they took the baby to the hospital to get checked out. Great story. And meet Ted. Hello, Ted. <laughs> that is a wombat who was orphaned, so the local police officers there in Australia decide to take care of the little guy. He has his run of the place, gets a lot of love from the officers. He spends the day just napping, hanging out, and eating. He gets a bottle fed to him four times a day. After about a year, hopefully Ted will be healthy enough so they can let him go back out into the wild if he wants to. I mean, I want to after all that. And finally this morning, you're watching video. <laughs> Look out, you're going to get smacked by a tail from a cat. It's a video conference of Parliament in the UK, and that is a cat's tail. The tail belongs to the cat named Rolo, and Rolo belongs to John Nicholson. He was actually talking about putting subtitles on children's television during the Digital Cultural Media and Sport Committee meeting when the cat showed up. Nicholson did apologize for the cat tail. 
but you know, what are you gonna do? It's, yeah. it's you know, you gotta way, keep. it's what do they call it, the new normal? Yes, you gotta you know? keep going. I'm Even in our own meetings, um, sure. my, my child will sit on my lap and I'm like, oh, hey guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so pets, children, they're all, they're all getting into our meetings. There, yeah. There's a, he, that uh, member of parliament posted a picture of his cat full on later right. and the cat has a look on his face like, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be on, on, on these meetings when exactly. I'm wandering around the house. Mm -hmm. yeah, my house, exactly. so what are you doing? So you should expect that. Oh, those crazy A cats. lot of things have been revealed over the last several months in people's homes that they probably didn't really Perhaps, expect to be yes. revealed because mm, of all these meetings. More than expected in yeah, some yeah. ways. You've heard a lot of things about a lot of people. <laughs> yes, indeed. David, thank, thank you. Thank you. 916 right now, 83 degrees. Yeah, we hit 105 yesterday. Mm -hmm. Pretty hot. And mm -hmm. again, hot, more hot news. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're going to switch it up a little bit. I, you know, I went in my backyard yesterday, guys, and I, I saw a bunch of little holes, and I was kind of curious as to what they were. After a little bit of research, uh, it's the cicada killers. They, they burrow these little holes in your yard, and you may see a few of them in your backyard. That's, that there's been quite a few, I feel like, cicada killers this year. And by the way, if you're not familiar with them, it's those big looking hornet things. Right. They kill the cicadas. Uh, they're not the murder, murder hornets. Just <laughs> yeah. to be clear. Uh, but yeah, if you see a couple of these uh, little holes, they're about the size of a quarter there in your backyard. That's probably what it is. Always wondered about that. Yeah, kind of interesting. Also, let's take a look back in history. This is an important day back in 2003. You may remember this when Hurricane Claudette moved into Texas, dropped a lot of heavy rain, brought 100 mile per hour winds to some of our eastern counties, and then dropped some flooding rains across Bear and Frio counties. That was way back in 2003. That was, I guess, a fairly active hurricane season. We certainly haven't seen any tropical weather yet here in Texas. It is expected to be a busy season, though, this season. Uh, high temperatures yesterday, another record here in San Antonio. We got up to 105. The record was 102, so we blew that out of the water. Same in Del Rio, 111 after hitting 112 the day before. And then all up and down uh, West Texas, we saw record high temperatures yesterday, too. Not as many as the day before, but still, it was very, very hot. It changes a little bit for places like Amarillo today. They're only expected to be around 93. That's a huge cool down. Uh, considering what we've been uh, seeing. And that's because there is a frontal boundary up there. And so there will be some severe weather, potentially slight risk of severe weather up there around Amarillo. It would be nice if we could get some of that wet weather down here. That is not going to be the case. It stays up there across North Texas and the Texas Panhandle. A few light returns stretching from Oklahoma City back over towards Lubbock. We've also got a few clouds trying to move in from the north. We've got some morning clouds as well. And what does that mean? Well, I think that brings temperatures down a little bit today. Any sort of cloud cover uh, can shave off a couple of degrees. And I think that's what we'll be looking at today. So we're forecasting a high of 101. And it's weird saying that's a cool down, but it is uh, from where we've been. 83 degrees right now. Dew point is at 72. There is a heat index today. 88 right now is what it feels like. 80 Canyon Lake, 77 Bernie Stage, 81 in Divine. You're up to 82 Caruso Springs, 84 right now in Kennedy. And the dew points, they're going to be a little more elevated today in the next couple of days. So we're going to have to start worrying about the heat index again. Yes, the air temperature is coming down, but the heat index is still going to be above 100 in many cases. Forecast high temperatures today, around 101 here in San Antonio, 105 in Del Rio, 99 in Kerrville. We may actually come down into the 90s for highs in the Hill Country the next couple of days. Very quickly, high pressure does weaken a little bit, moves north. That does open the door for a little disturbance to roll in. I think we could get a few showers, especially along the Texas coast Friday afternoon, and then perhaps again on Saturday, although anything we see would be light and few and far between. At least there are some chances there. 101 today, heat index anywhere from 103 to 105. We'll go 99 tomorrow, 98 on Friday with those slight chances of showers and storms. And we stay in the upper 90s as we get into the weekend and next week, guys. Thank you, Justin. 920, 83 degrees. And still head on GMSA at 9. An honor for a football team in Georgia, five decades in the making. Why it took 50 years for this middle school team to receive recognition for winning a championship. 923, a recognition of excellence, 50 years overdue. A Georgia middle school football team finally being honored for winning a state championship more than five decades ago. ABC's Deborah Roberts has that story. A headline from my Georgia roots that takes me back. An honor for teen boys, this football team, five decades in the making.
The idea that you all were overlooked all this time, was this just about kind of finally righting a wrong? I think the wrong was that we was not recognized uh, by the school, by the Board of Education, by the city of Perry. The welcome sign in Perry reads where Georgia comes together, but in 1969, it was deeply divided. I know because I grew up here, a child of segregation. Lawrence Clarington recalls how division denied him a special honor. I've been crying all morning. Yeah. I thought this day would never come. In eighth grade at Houston High, he and his football teammates became state champions, a first for Perry. But the victory for the all-black school, only a footnote in the local paper. No ceremony, no championship rings. The students were later integrated into Perry High, the town's white school, wiping away years of history. The trophies and everything that was in that school was thrown away. One of the fellows that was a sophomore, he actually decided to go in the dumpster to get the trophy. That recovered trophy, the only symbol of their triumph, until now. 50 years after the big win, Houston High finally celebrated by the city of Perry, finally getting those championship rings. A special moment for my family too. Lawrence is my brother-in-law. He met his first love, my sister, that very year. This occasion is more than about Winning a championship is more than about getting rings. So was it as sweet as you had hoped it would be? I mean, it was sweet, sweet. Wasn't nothing bitter about it. Teammates reunited, healing old wounds. Never give up! Never give up! Never give up! That was ABC News' Deborah Roberts reporting from Georgia. Glad they finally got that honor. Congratulations. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Here's something you don't hear every day. Burger King trying to reduce methane emissions from cows passing gas. How they plan on doing that? And we have an update on Captain Tom Moore, the English war veteran who raised more than $40 million for the UK's National Health Service. We're going to tell you when he will officially be knighted by the Queen. We have been tracking that story uh, for months now. And now that the runoff is behind us, all eyes shifting towards the November general election. So when it comes to voting for president, how is the pandemic influencing Texas voters? We'll hear from a few after the break. And welcome back. It's 930. National polls suggest that if the election were held today, Joe Biden would come out ahead of President Donald Trump. But as we know, presidential elections not decided by a national vote count. They're all decided, but decided rather by a tally of electoral votes from each state. Texas is a state with a very high number of electoral votes. It's also one of the states seeing a surge in coronavirus cases recently. Seen as Ed Lavendera visited a, a usually conservative city in here in the Lone Star State to hear how voters think the president is handling the pandemic. The quaint downtown square of McKinney, Texas promises historic good times. But the good vibes have been smothered by the historic coronavirus. The pandemic is casting a long shadow over the 2020 presidential election. I think the whole COVID thing's being used as a tool to divide us as a country instead of coming together, which I think is really sad for our country. Margie Schreer and Kelly Tallow both support President Trump and say he's done an honest job of handling the pandemic. I think he's probably doing the best that he can right now. I mean, there's so much mixed information out there and trying to decipher what's fact and what's fiction and where it's coming from. Yeah. It's tough. I wouldn't want to be in his position. Although I don't always like his decisions, I think his intentions are always good. In his own, I think he gathers the information and he makes the decision for our country and not for an ulterior motive of personal gain. McKinney, Texas is one of the historically conservative big city suburbs where political analysts say Trump is vulnerable. And it's the kind of area Joe Biden is now targeting with a new television ad. This virus is tough, but Texas is tougher. Recent polls show Trump and Biden locked in a tight race in Texas. Of course, the idea of a Democrat winning Texas is still viewed with high skepticism. But there is a strong wave of anger toward President Trump among some Texas voters. How do you think President Trump has handled this pandemic? Failure. Total failure. 
his actions and lack of actions have exacerbated the effects of the pandemics on all Americans. And he's not taking responsibility for anything that he does. He always blames someone else. He said, no, there's no danger at all. Nobody has died. It's just, uh, it's going to go away by itself. And uh, those are the things, you know, which really bothers me as a citizen that uh, he'd really take it very uh, lightly. For some Trump supporters, the president is a victim of unfair criticism, politically motivated in an election year. He had to hit the ground running in all of the unknowns, and I feel like he's been second-guessed for the majority of it. It's easy now to become an armchair quarterback and, and to criticize what he's done. Ed Lavendera, CNN, McKinney, Texas. Back here at home outside with live cam. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's going to be hot. Yesterday, uh, I went ahead and I braved it, and I went for a run. My little girl wanted to go in the stroller, and then she was like, Mommy, let's go back home. It's just too hot. Yeah, and she's right. Rooney gave up. <laughs> yeah, she did, in the stroller, <laughs> in the uh, running stroller. That pretty much happened to me. We got to like the end of the block. We're like, nope. Yep. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah, the heat is on for sure. Eight, yesterday, 105. Today we're thinking 101, so a little bit cooler. We just keep stepping down each day. We're still in the triple digits here. And by the way, today would be another new record high. The record is 102. We'll get awful close. If not, uh, we're not. We may tie the record potentially this afternoon. Uh, tomorrow we'll get highs in the 90s. More humidity. That's going to be a problem as we go forward because we're going to have to start talking about heat index values. This weekend, though, there is a slight chance for a shower, mainly Friday. Uh, potentially on Saturday as well, and a little bit of dust starts to come back in. I know we don't want to talk about that, but it is expected to be back here in South Texas. 82 Boulevard, 86 New Braunfels, 85 Divine, 81 at Hondo, 79 right now Uvalde. Forecast calls for a high right around 101 today. Southerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. We're going to forecast out some of that dust for you, let you know when it will be here. We've also got our junior meteorologist coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Transguide right now, 35 at 37. We had problems there this morning, but uh, looking fantastic right now. Even at the ramp, there's 37 at Jones Avenue. And some consumer news this morning. What would you do if you go to a fast food restaurant and you see a robot cooking your French fries? Well, White Castle has joined forces with Miso Robotics to bring robotic workers into the kitchen like the one on your screen right now called Flippy. How cute. Uh, White Castle says robotic workers lessen possible food contamination risks, also allows human co-workers to do other stuff. Uh, Flippy is the first autonomous grilling and frying short order cook. Ah, oh, flippy. And speaking about fast food restaurants, Burger King wants to lower its contribution to methane gas by feeding its cows a healthier diet. That's because it will lead to less cows releasing gas into the environment. What we're not showing you here is they released one of the weirdest commercials or PSAs I've ever seen in my life. It features kids and cows and gas. Uh, Burger King <laughs> says by doing all this, they're going to help cut emissions <laughs> emissions by 33% each day. Most methane in the environment comes uh, from bovines releasing gas, best known at, I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. Oriana's like, I'm going to see if he's going to read that, and I'm going to write it that way, but I'm not doing it. Mm -mm. Uh, those emissions are a key contributor to climate change. <laughs> Restaurants in some cities will be eating new lemongrass-fed beef whoppers starting today. Okay. According to a new research published in the scientific journal Science Advance, it suggests that the moon is actually younger than we thought. Previous estimations put the moon's age at 4.51 billion years, but this new research suggests the moon was formed 4.425 billion years ago. Yeah, so you just moved the decimal of space or two. Not. That would make it <laughs> roughly 85 million years younger than previously thought. Scientists generally agree the moon was formed from debris when an ancient planet collided with Earth. However, there's been disagreement about when it actually happened. We can safely say it has not happened during the pandemic. And the moon was offended that we thought it was older. Very right? possible. Very offended. Very possible. <laughs> Want to strengthen the bond with your dog? Celebrity Animal Trainer is offering free interactive online 
tutorials. Two this week. One was Tuesday, and they're scheduling another one. It's tonight, and we'll talk about that. So let's talk about the trainer. Uh, Nicole Ellis has spent her life training all sorts of different animals, uh, whether it's bears, tigers, or horses, and uh, also training a variety of animals and getting to hang out with pets and celebrities. But her biggest joy, though, is training her own two dogs. That's right. Her dogs are uh, Maggie and Rossi. They, uh, she have, they, they've appeared in uh, commercials for companies like Xfinity, Target, SunTrust, Neiman Marcus, and more. They've also been on the, some of the late nights like Today Show, well, Today Show and Nightline. And so for dog owners who want to get an up-close look at how Ellis has trained her dogs for those prominent roles, there will be like uh, a couple of chances like Mark was saying earlier, one of them being tonight. Free online classes bringing, uh, aimed at bringing owners and the dogs closer together. Sessions will, this, sessions will be held Tuesday, Thursday, so tonight from 8 to 9 p.m. on Varsity Tutors. Oh yeah, t yeah, it is Wednesday. Tomorrow, I want it to be Thursday. Tomorrow's <laughs> is at th so it's tomorrow, eight to nine p.m. on Varsity Tutors, and for a link to that, go to our website at ksat.com. And this is supposed to strengthen the bond with your with your dog, but I feel like, you know, being home more, we're already getting that bond with our with our pets already. I'm still obsessing that Oriana tried to get me to say cow emissions in a very slang kind of way. Sneaky, sneaky. Uh, 938, <laughs> 83 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. The mayor of a town in Massachusetts oh, stepping up to save the day when the reverend that was supposed to marry a couple did not show up. You're not going to want to miss this story. A Massachusetts couple, now husband and wife, but saying I do was not as easy as they thought it would be. Nope. Bill Shields with WBZ in Boston explains how their planned wedding went almost crazy to be saved at the last moment by a local official on vacation. Matt and Naomi Kalia's wedding photo from last Saturday on the Cape. And the guy in the red shirt, he's not a wedding crasher. That's Carlo Di Maria, the mayor of Everett. He stepped in when the reverend was a no-show. Saying our vows, looking across from each other with the water there, our family there, our dog at our feet. Yeah, yeah, we had personal vows written down and Mayor could be there with us and we were both crying and everything. When the Reverend didn't show up, Naomi's mom spotted Di Maria in a nearby backyard and asked if he had the authority to marry the couple. He did not. We were able to make it an official, yeah. uh, legal. So Di Maria decided to call Governor Baker who gave the Everett mayor emergency justice of the peace status. And the vows were said. Like Matt said, they had a, it was a great, uh, very easy, it was right on the, the cell phone. I was able to just scroll through. The young couple are both doctors heading to new jobs at Cape Cod Hospital. But they stopped for lunch at Willow Bend Country Club to give Di Maria a gift. They would have liked to also have the governor and lieutenant governor at the table. How, you know, how Lieutenant Governor Polito and Governor Baker care about their citizens. And it was nice to hear that directly from them on the phone. And that was WBZ's Bill Shills reporting from Boston, Massachusetts. Check this out. Captain Tom Moore set to be officially knighted by Queen Elizabeth this week. You may remember the 100 year old English war veteran raised more than $40 million for the UK's National Health Service. We have reported on him numerous times. Buckingham Palace said in a statement that members of Captain Tom's family will attend, which it's all scheduled for Friday. It'll be Queen Elizabeth's first public engagement since she began limiting her activities in March amid the coronavirus pandemic. Sir, it'll be Sir Tom Moore. Let's get used to that. Yes, you will. Been following that for a while. And Justin, I understand we have a junior meteorologist. They're probably, uh, you know, getting ready to, I was going to say, not really go back to school, but maybe online learning. Prepping the mind, right? right, right. Yeah. <laughs> getting a little bit of science mixed in there. Yeah, this is Emma. She's a six year old from Pleasanton. And boy, she's got some energy and she gets creative. Take a listen. Today, there's no chance of rain. It's going to be 105, 
and at 10 p.m. it's going to be 90 degrees so you make sure if you're outside have some water with you or stay inside. Summer's coming to an end so make sure to have fun like me and this is your San Antonio weather report by your favorite Emma Pacheco. I love it. You wish you had moves like that, uh, Justin. Horn. Oh, and you. Uh, that was impressive all the way around. Great way job. Around. Great job. I wish I could push a button and it would like get cold like that. That would be great. Yes, that would be great nice. Great job, Emma. We thank you very much for sending that in. Okay, let's talk about the dust that we could potentially see this weekend. I know this is not anything uh, we want to hear, but uh, here we are. Uh, I do think that we could see a little bit of uh, a plume on Saturday. I don't think it's going to be a huge one. But uh, it may cause some issues with folks with allergies, as uh, we've dealt with a little bit earlier uh, over, the, over the summer. And you look on Thursday, very light here, but it is uh, Saturday where you start to see this more sort of uh, concentrated dust plume work in. I think it's probably just Saturday, though. By Sunday, this is moving out. So hopefully it's just a one-day thing. We may see a little bit of haze in the atmosphere on Saturday. Uh, meantime, let's check in on the aquifer and see where we are there. It is still dropping 655.3 today. The 10 day average is 657.6. Of course, this is important, uh, the 10 day average, because if we get below 650 10 day rolling average, we're talking about stage two restrictions, which really aren't that different from stage one. Uh, messes with the timing a little bit. We're not there yet. But we're headed in the wrong direction still. We could use a little bit of rain. And there's, again, not a whole lot in the forecast. Let's take a look at that future cast. High pressure still in control, but it shrinks a little bit. Weekend some, so temperatures come down some. And then we get a little disturbance rolling in from the east. And that may kick up a few showers. This is Friday, 5 o'clock. I put in a 20% chance of rain. That may be a little hopeful here around San Antonio. But I think if you're down towards the coast, uh, we are going to see some showers pop up. That'll be the case Saturday, too, depending on where this thing sets up. And if it uh, weakens a little bit, we may not see as much, but a couple showers possible Saturday afternoon, too. Uh, here's the setup right now. We've got uh, some light returns showing up across parts of North Texas. There is a frontal battery up there uh, and then some clouds trying to move in. We've got some clouds from the north and then we have some of our morning clouds. So at the moment, partly cloudy. Any sort of cloud cover is going to help us today. Hopefully keep those temperatures below a 100 degrees, uh, but right now we're forecasting 101. So probably uh, still going to get into the triple digits today. After today, though, uh, we'll see those numbers dip below the century mark. Uh, there is potential for some severe weather today up around Amarillo as you get up into parts of Colorado, and that's along this frontal battery. They'll also be quite a bit cooler up there, 93 degrees. That is cooler compared to what we've been seeing. Uh, forecast high here in San Antonio, 101, though. 105 Del Rio, 103 San Angelo. These are big numbers, but not as big as in uh, days past. 83 right now. Dew point is at 72. We've got a good southerly breeze. Temperatures in the 70s and the 80s for the most part. 86 Gonzales, 84 right now in Kennedy. And the uh, dew point tracker uh, over the next couple days keeps dew points a little bit higher. So we will have to start talking about heat index values again. And we may see a little bit of uh, heat index today. High of 101, but it may feel more like 103, 105. And uh, that'll be the case for much of the area. So the forecasts, there you go, 101, 95 though by 8 o'clock with mostly clear, 95 I should say, with mostly clear skies. 99 Thursday, 98 Friday with a 20% chance of rain and then just a 10% chance on Saturday. Thankfully though, there's a lot of 90s on that map as opposed to triple digits. It looks like we're getting out of those at least huge numbers for a while. We'll take it. As of for today, it looks like it's another day we're going to have to wait till later in the day to take my daughter out for a bicycle ride. Probably, definitely. probably. <laughs> it sounds like a safe bet. Yep, 949, 83 degrees. And we take a look at today's 9 at 9 next. And welcome back. It's 952. Some good news this morning regarding a possible vaccine for COVID-19. Plus, no more delays. You must file your taxes today. Sorry, here's today's 9 at 9. Mary M.J. Hagar is declaring victory over Royce West for the Democratic nomination for U.S. Senate. Hagar will face off against Republican incumbent and Senate Majority Whip John Cornyn in November. 
Teachers are raising fears about returning to schools too soon. In Pinellas County, Florida, they're protesting in the gravest of terms. When I signed up to teach, I didn't sign up for hazardous duty, folks. I served eight and a half years in the military. I never once feared for my life. I do now. What in the hell are we doing? San Antonio ISD planning to keep students out of classrooms until after Labor Day. Superintendent Pedro Martinez says that the Board of Trustees will be considering whether to push back the beginning of the school year by week from August 10th to August 17th. He then plans to use the full three weeks that the state allows him to keep every student in SAISD away from campus and doing remote learning. On the vaccine front, Moderna says volunteers who received shots of the vaccine it's working on developed antibodies with no serious side effects. I hope that that time will be reasonably soon. And when I say soon, I say within the next year to year and a half. Another health scare for the Supreme Court's oldest justice. The court saying that Ruth Bader Ginsburg is being treated at the hospital for a possible infection. The 87-year-old undergoing a medical procedure at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. A mother of two who is working to become a real estate agent found dead at a home on the west side. Family members say Jasmine Williams was just 19. She didn't need to die like that. Galen Maxwell denied bail, a judge ruling that because of her unknown but substantial wealth and international connections, she poses a substantial actual risk of flight. She has never shown any remorse for her heinous crimes or for the devastating, lasting impact her actions have caused. An update for international students with concerns over visas amid the pandemic. A little over a week ago, those students were told they must be enrolled in in-person classes to remain in the United States. The Trump administration now rescinding that decision. The federal income tax deadline is here. If you still haven't filed, you need to do so today to avoid a fine. You can request a filing extension to October 15th but you still need to submit an extension form by the end of the day today. Listen to this story out of uh, Michigan, East Point, Michigan. A man won $2 million lottery after clerk gave him the wrong scratch off lottery ticket. This is crazy. The Michigan lottery said the man stopped at a gas station in East Point, Michigan to put air in his tire. He yep. needed to change for the air machine. And so he also asked for actually a $10 lucky seven scratch off ticket. Said the clerk handed me a $20 ticket by mistake. He offered to exchange it for me, but something told me to keep it. I'm sure glad I did. Oh my goodness, this is so crazy. So the name of the 57 year old man wasn't released. He decided to take a lump sum of about 1.3 million instead of 2 million spread over many years. That's what the lottery said. That is pretty lucky. So $10, he asked for $10, got the 20 instead. Mm -hmm. And the clerk was <laughs> wow. like, nah, you just keep it. And then he was like, I sure will. And I'm <laughs> That's incredible. glad he did. <laughs> Have, Have a nice a, day. Have a good one.